just a couple of days away from the start of uh, another baseball season. Um, this place just feels like the momentum is that big train coming down the tracks and with what you've been able to do. Um, you know, how proud are you of what you've built in such a short amount of time? Um, proud of, for sure, uh, what the staff has been able to do and what typical people call four years. Uh, I always look back to that third year that was shortened by the pandemic and all that other stuff. And uh, I think that might have been our most talented team on paper. But last year, as of now, the, the closest team or the best team chemistry we had was, was that team. And, um, so I think it's important for this team to try and combo those things. We've got a lot of talent on paper, uh, but they also need to find their own identity and who they are as a team. Every team is different. Every year is different. Last year's team had that knack of never say die, winning close games, just had to have that it factor. When did you know it maybe had that it factor? And what similarities can you see with this, this new group? Well, I think you had about four or five guys that, you know, it factor is very vague, but you had some guys you knew if we didn't do well, they might throw somebody up against a locker. And it kind of made you feel good as a coach that they're that competitive. It's going to kind of have a ripple effect throughout the dugout in the locker room, and it showed. But then after you accumulate a few of the wins that you're, you're talking about, um, you start to kind of see, okay, maybe these guys have that knack for winning, kind of like a goal scorer has or, or a guy who scores points in any, any sort of sport has a knack for finding a way. And last year's group could find a way. Um, I think this coming up team, um, again, the, the talent is there, and some of those guys that were responsible for that are still on this current roster. When you look at this year's team, obviously people are going to you know, talk about a, a guy like Evan Russell who's getting that extra COVID year. You know, I, I said, you know, going into this offseason for football, I thought it was important for guys like Jerome Carvin to stay to kind of keep that trajectory going up for Coach Heupel. Is that kind of Evan Russell for you guys to continue? I mean, I know there's talent, but I mean, to have that guy that's experienced, that, you know, will kind of light into you if, if, if other guys are not doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah, I think some of those guys know what it looks like uh, to win, to lose, what the league looks like. Um, they've got reps as far as experience that way. Uh, but the most valuable asset, I think, are the guys able to coach the younger players and say this is why we do this and how we do this and this is what will happen if you do it this way and and so i don't want to say we've done less coaching because that's certainly not the case but it kind of resembles some of those teams that coach barnes has had where the players coach every bit as much as as the coaches do because they know the culture of the program and how things work there how has the culture flipped uh you know i i think from day one um, we just kind of tried to change a little bit here and there, and our stadium has reflected that. Um, other than the artificial surface, we have not had one major project go on at our stadium, but we've had a ton of smaller projects, and our players see that, they appreciate that, and I think it is, again, kind of a parallel of what we've tried to do in the program where it's been just improve a little bit daily or change something here and there, and then after a year, you'll see a bunch of progress is made. After a couple years, even more. You love to recruit. When you've went out and, and been on the road recruiting over the last year, is there a different feel? When you, when you, I mean, you've had success even when you guys, you know, were first getting here. But now that you've shown success, you've gotten to Omaha. Is there a different vibe when you talk to a kid? Yeah, and there's a different vibe when you're at the park. I mean, when you wear orange, uh, it doesn't matter if you're at an airport in California, a, a Vol fan or an alum is gonna see it and they're gonna say something. That's just the nature of Vol Nation. But now other people who maybe cheer for another school but appreciated the way our kids played last year or saw us in a certain game come up to you. And then of course the most valuable people are the kids that are playing, especially the ones that have talent. And I think they see a certain brand name here and it appeals to some of them. We talked about Evan a minute ago. You got guys like you know Drew Gilbert and, and, and Jordan Beck, players that have gotten some preseason honors. Do you feel like they've taken that step from last season to this season? Yeah, I think you see a level of maturity in both those guys and their temperament. Uh, part of this game is we have more reps than a basketball season or a football season. So consistency is so huge, and not just on game day, but how you approach everything on a scrimmage day or a practice day. Um, and that's just one of many ways. I mean, Drew laid down a bunt yesterday that not only could he not even made contact with it, he never could have executed it the way he did. And 
we'll see if that becomes a part of his arsenal in the season. But there, there's a lot of little things if you're with those two kids and a few others day in and day out, you see they've matured mentally and physically. How much do you have to stress, you know, for those young guys that aren't on the field? It, it, Rome's not built in a day. You know, it, it, this takes time to develop. So what you are as a freshman is not going to be what you are as a junior or senior. So I'm, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. You talked about culture. Um, you know, for us, the biggest obstacle was flipping the mindset that we are good enough. We are a true SEC competitor. Believing. Yeah, the self-belief and team belief. And I think for a freshman or an incomer, you want them to have that belief right away that you can take somebody's job in between the lines. At the same time, like you're talking about, when you're out of uniform and you're scribbling on your notepad or you're daydreaming about your career, I think you have to have a realistic you know, vision of how you want this thing to go. If you're a competitor, you're in this for the long term. You wanna be playing your best or, or pitching your best when you're 30 years old, not when you're 18 or 19. And a good freshman season, you know, is getting a taste. And there's a lot of great players and guys in the big leagues who only got a taste as a freshman and then increase their role as years, you know, came along. So how do you as a coach take that same approach when it comes to, you know, you lose some key guys off last year's team. It may not be as quick to, you know, resonate with this year's group, but take the long approach for the season and know, hey, how you're playing in February as the season gets ready to start and how you're playing in May are two totally different things. No, it's true, but it's also right now. I think you got to, it's a delicate balance. Like I said, self-belief versus realistic view. It's kind of like when, when you're on the, on the field in uniform, it's gotta be right now. What are we doing right now? And what's the moment we're either preparing for or competing uh, you know, within a certain environment and, and trying to get a win in any shape or form. But at the same time, when we talk in the, in the meeting room or the team lounge or something like that, we're talking about our big vision and that's right now prepare for non-conference. Non-conference will help us prepare for SEC and uh, fortunately, or last year we were in postseason, so if that comes again this year, the SEC will prepare you as, as well as anything for the postseason. So it's a, it's a gradual stepping up type deal. I know you're high on the depth of your pitching staff, and with Blade Tidwell out for the, at least the first part of the season, do you feel like that provides a chance for some of these younger guys that you really feel like can contribute to step up and, and which will provide more depth when he comes back? Yeah, the good thing about Tidwell is he'll, he'll be in the dugout and he'll be here. He's, he's got a unique personality, but he's a part of this team. And uh, I still consider him a leader, even though he won't be on the mound opening day like you alluded to. We'll see how many weeks it is. It's going to be at least a handful before he's out there. And what that does is you hit the nail on the head. It provides opportunities for others. And if things go as written down on paper, he comes back. He's the same old guy that he was last year for us. Um, it's almost kind of like signing a free agent in the middle of the year. <laughs> yeah. you, you got a great guy, but now you have these other guys who have developed too who are available. The community, they've all embraced and fallen in love with, with Tennessee baseball again, thanks to you. They know these kids. Like They feel like they know Evan Russell. He's out there at birthday parties, and, and they know Drew Gilbert and, and, and Tidwell and, and Jordan and those players. Who's somebody that they're going to know really quick with this team that they don't know now? You know, um, an easy one for me is a duo. Um, Chase Dolander from Georgia Southern is only a sophomore, so he'll be around a couple years. Uh, and then Chase Burns, uh, who's from the Nashville area. And he's a freshman pitcher. Um, could have easily gone in the draft last year, but like a Blade Tidwell, um, kind of saw his future being bettered here and also just wanted this experience. And that's something the fans don't realize is, yeah, they help us win games, but there's such a bigger effect there. They help in recruiting, um, and there's guys that say, why do I want to go play low-A ball in front of 30 fans when I can play in front of all the crazies that are in this stadium? How much have you appreciated the buy-in from businesses and, and people around the state for your program for NIL? Uh, enough that it's kind of worn me ragged this, this past month and a half. Um, I've kind of gone out and done a bunch of different things. I'll go to a luncheon this afternoon. And that's the only way I can show appreciation. I mean, you can say thank you to the cameras all you want, but I think there's gotta be some action to it. And same for our players. Um, they run out to the porches when we advance to Omaha and thank you and tipping their cap and even throwing some stuff up in the porches out there. Uh, but eventually you have to show thank you through actions. And I think the best way for our guys to show appreciation is to play with passion on the field and play in a way that makes Ball Nation proud, whether we win or lose. Last thing out the door, if you were a player, 
What kind of NIL deal would you be trying to get? Hair product? Hair <laughs> so, product? You got the, but besides Brennan Webb, you may have the second best hair, hair, on, hair on campus. Get, get, well, I, <laughs> I, I can't beat Brennan in anything. Uh, but I would be looking for some pasta. Um, and yesterday I was a player. I got to play a little second base during one of our drills in practice, and uh, I got exposed by our guys. I, I, I didn't execute as well as they could. But it's fun to act like you're young and bounce around with these guys. And I, I would kill to be – I'm a part of this team, but I would kill to be in their shoes and be young. And I, I think the NIL stuff helps our guys, um, you know, kind of fill in the blanks because our kids are paying good money. Their families are out of pocket. Um, but more than anything, they need to realize where they really captivate the fans. And maybe some of those things come is, again, with the passion they play on the field, uh, attracting attention from our fans. Well, Coach, we appreciate the time. We appreciate you being accessible. And it's a big reason the Tennessee fans have fallen in love with you and, and this program. It's reciprocated, and we appreciate you. All right. That's head coach Tony Vitello, Tennessee baseball, getting ready to start their season coming up in just a matter of days.